Hey guys, so glad for you to join me today. I've got this brand new sunrise painting of the Montana Badlands, in fact. Yes, there are Badlands in Montana. This is just outside Terry, Montana. Beautiful countryside, eastern Montana. Uh, gathered some reference there last year. And so I'm going to paint this scene for you today. Full-time, real-time version. Uh, take you through step-by-step. It's another long video. So sit back, grab your paintbrush, cup of coffee, whatever. And let's get to it. So we have our sketch laid out here. Uh, I've sprayed it with a fixative, let it dry, and it's sort of sealed up, ready for paint. I've got the sun right here, some scribbles kind of everywhere, some ideas for horizon lines, and then these scribbles in the sky just kind of indicate where the color transitions are going to occur between the warm colors around the sun and the darker blues and cool colors up high in the sky. So we'll get into that as we go. Um, I have to apologize once again in this video as my SD card for my palette cam was full this time. So I did charge the battery, but I didn't check the card. So it, it stopped on me before I started mixing these colors. So I got to apologize a little bit. I have some pre-mixed colors, which um, I was hoping to, to share how I mix them. But basically what we've got here, and I have all the materials I'll be using today in the description below along with the brushes. Uh, just everything. So check the description below if you have any questions first. I've got carbon black, titanium white, cadmium orange, cadmium red, ultramarine blue, quinacridone magenta, cad yellow, phthalo blue, green shade. And then the colors that I've mixed down here, I basically mixed, uh, these are all, consider them sort of a variation of gray. So I basically mixed a light gray and added orange to get this color. To get this one, I added, I took light gray and I added more red to this color. So a little bit of orange, but more of a reddish orange to get that variation. Again, I mixed a light gray. And for this one, I added some quinacridone magenta, some red, and then some ultramarine blue. This color over here, I basically took a darker gray. So I just mixed a darker gray and then I added phthalo blue and quinacridone magenta. So it kind of produces a darker violet color. And then this color down here, basically mix an even darker gray, eh, probably about the same. The blue probably made a little bit darker. So I used kind of the same darker gray, but I added more phthalo blue with a little bit of ultramarine blue to get this color. And then this is just sort of reverse. It's a darker gray, but there's more ultramarine blue, not as much phthalo blue into this mixture. So we got some dark blues. We've got uh, a, a dark violet, sort of a lighter violet. And then we've got some reddish orange gray and some orangish gray. I haven't touched the yellow yet. And these are basically the colors we're going to start with. I've got two uh, jars of water over here and I'm going to mix them with water. And that's pretty much all I'm going to be using for right now. So we've got some moisture on the brush. And I'm just going to grab some of this color with my flat brush. So this is kind of interesting. I think like as I'm looking at this color, so I like to mix kind of on the go, as you know, if you've seen a lot of my videos in the past, I think I actually need this to be not so yellowy. So I'm going to add some more of this color with a bit of red. And I think this is actually going to produce more of a result than I'm looking for. And I'm going to start with the area of the sun. And so, Per usual, this is just kind of a blocking in stage. So I'm loosely following some of these lines that I created. It's really just letting me know how far to go with each color. And so this color is going to kind of live right there and then I think what I need to do is get some more white. 
So these pre-mixed colors, this kind of just proves that it's not a big deal. I mix really on the go all the time. I kind of despise pre-mixed colors, although they are nice to have to be able to just grab, but I'll rarely just like get one so well uh, from pre-mixing them that it just works for me. I usually have to manipulate them in some fashion. So I'm not going to worry about the specifics of how things are looking right now. I'm just going to cover the canvas, get it on there. I probably could use some more of this yellowish color for like the horizon. That's actually might have mixed a pretty good color for the horizon. Didn't want as much paint right there. I think I wanted that to be more white, so I'm just going to kind of drag some of that away. I'll cover it up in a minute. So this is going on thin enough where I can still see the lines underneath. And that's what I want. I want to be able to paint this and also see what I'm doing at the same time. And so these first couple layers are kind of key. I don't, I want to move quickly in this blocking in stage. I'm going to grab some of this violet color or violet gray. I want to move quickly in this portion, but I also want to know what I'm doing. So it's hard to follow lines when you're trying to move quickly, but I want to know what I'm doing. So I'm painting thin enough to where I can see those lines and not have to worry about them disappearing right away right now. So I battle that by just keeping the paint thin to start. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and wash my brush. And just kind of dab it off a little bit. I'm going to pick up some more of this color. I think I might want more violet, like more of a magenta maybe. But like not too much, I don't know. Something like that. Now, we're going to have some detail. This is always the struggle with painting skies like this is you try to do too much too quick and it becomes confusing and it it really kind of dampens the mood on everything i don't know it's just not an enjoyable process so what i'm getting at is instead of over complicating it and doing too much detail is pretty much what I'm speaking about. Just worry about the, the blocks of cut, like transitioning colors. The majority of this section of the sky is going to be in this range of color. So I'm not worried about any specifics. I'm just gonna block in that color and then I'll add things over the top, change it, manipulate it, whatever, as we go. So it's probably just gonna dry and that's okay. Same thing goes with further up in the sky. So again, this is just like not doing too much. A little bit of white into that. Not doing too much. Focusing on what is the major color theme in that area. Kind of a violet theme up here. So we're just going to coat it all in this violet color. There's going to be some highlights and such. I'm just not worried about it right now. I'd rather get things covered so that I have something to work with. So this is sort of like toning the canvas in a very detailed manner. So instead of just starting out with a tone, like a, a warm tone, I don't know, burnt sienna tone for just, you know, the color of our canvas to get started, 
I'm sort of like actively toning it as I go to a proper color. So I'm just trying to match. I like having white underneath. I think it just produces brighter results uh, without having to work so much at it. So we're actively toning, kind of a new thing. It's gonna, it's, I think what I'm gonna call it. I don't know my best way that I feel like I can articulate that. And we're gonna grab this darker blue and we're gonna cover up the top portion. And we're just kind of blend it in. Because I'm using enough water, they sort of stay open long enough. So I'm drying the brush off. I don't I don't want probably to pick up some of that color just to blend together. So you can kind of pick up some of the both of the colors on the brush and then blend them together. But they stay open enough, just long enough for me to get somewhat of a transition of blend. And a lot of it has to do with the like I'd like to say that it's not about the brush, it's or about, you know, how you handle that brush. But at the same time, too, if you're not using a brush that works, it's going to be hard to make it work. There's just, brushes make things easier on us, even though I feel like you can accomplish pretty much everything with any brush. Still doesn't mean that there aren't shortcuts to it by using the right brush. So this brush has a lot of fluff to it. It's got good pull, kind of what I look for in a brush, but enough hairs to hold a good amount of paint, a good amount of moisture. I don't like them to be a really thin, flat brush. I'd rather have some volume to it. Okay. That's, that's not bad. I'm just going to leave that be. That's a really good start. Actually, no, I lied. I lied. I always lie on these things. It just things change so quick. I'm gonna just going to get some darker color, darker blue. And right up top. We get sort of a, a darker blue. Then I think what I'm going to try to do is I've got, I don't know, this is just a really, really old raggedy brush. There's a couple spots I think I can try to blend. So this is a brush that I can kind of fan things out with. So I'm just going to fan out some of these darker tones. Again, things are going to change so much. This is just blocking in these colors, getting the canvas covered. Take a little bit of that darker color at it. We're just right in the middle. Perfect. Moving on. Uh, down below, I'm going to just kind of dab my brush off, wash it. Down below, basically going to be using, let's just start with black. Why not? Let's just kind of get way down there covered in black. And I'm just kind of scrub it upwards. I'm gonna take some orange and red, probably like this color right there. A little more orange, a little more red. I'm gonna scrub that color in so it's gonna lighten up that black. I'm gonna dab off good amount of that. I'm going to pick up some orange, some red. I'm 
about like that. I'm just going to mix this color in. Not worried about that, the specific of this color either, but I know it's close to what I'm after. So that's why I'm just going to go ahead and just run with it, stick with it, because I can change it and I will change it. But it's in the ballpark. Looking good. Wash my brush again. I'm going to probably switch to a little more controlled brush. So we've got an angular flat brush, I guess is what you could call it. Angle brush. Let's see. Probably going to take the same color, add a little bit of orange to it. Orangish gray. Maybe some yellow. I'd probably get into some of this yellow. We're going to get close to the sun. It's the only place I really want to use yellow. It's probably about right. Yeah, I'd say so. So I'm just going to start filling in these blocks of color, which will represent the buttes and the hills. Further we get away, the darker it's going to get. So you can probably add some red, some black. Hmm. A little more red and black, or sorry, red and orange. Probably something like this. Feather that up a little bit. And just draw in. Indication of a ridge right there. I'm probably going to get, probably take the same color, add some water. And that'll represent this butte back here. Take some more black. Red and orange. Something like that. That's probably going to be about the color of that butte back there. And in between there, I'm going to want to brighten this up a bit. Probably this color right in here. So I'm adding some, some orange, some gray. I don't know, just something, maybe some more orange. More of like a yellowy, saturated version of, of these two colors here. A little darker. A little more red. Maybe I can try adding some yellow to this. I'm using magenta for red right now. I'm kind of running out of red. I'm just trying to find that right. Probably about, probably about in there. And I'm gonna 
just take this color, fill it in through here. Okay. Last color. You do a little bit of work around the sky, the, the sun. Already we got a good looking painting though. Really kind of wash that out good. Take some white, some yellow, and a little bit of this peachy orange red color. A little more yellow. Yellow and orange. Something like that. I'll lighten up some of this area. I also want to take, the thing I forgot about is just taking some yellow and white brightening up a couple of these spots I wanted to be brighter. I'm going to start with this color for the sun and surrounding highlights. It's not pure white. I don't want it to be though right now. Use my finger just kind of blend out some of that. All right, then we got more of that peachy orange color. Looking pretty good. A little bit of black and yellow. Probably a touch of orange in there. Trying to create like a saturated, more saturated version. A lighter and more saturated version of this hill right here. Black, yellow, orange. It's kind of all I'm mixing together right now. There's some white in there, obviously. Little hill right there. Another hill right there. A little bit of this color here. Fade it off over there. Just take a little bit of red, mix into this hill. It's just a little bit too green for me. Red will fix that.
Okay, close enough. This is a blocked in painting. I'm gonna let all this dry, come back just a little bit, move to the next step. Now, the next step, uh, and I'm probably gonna move just from the top to the bottom just to kind of keep it simple. Uh, so let's start with this portion of the sky up here. The next step is I'm just gonna start adding layers of detail. And uh, the first thing that I kind of want to do with the sky is start adding some of the highlights within these clouds. We have the color of the, the clouds essentially established. Now I'm going to kind of work on some of the highlights, right? So we need uh, the, the highlights, the shadows, and then, you know, what color is that going to be? So we kind of have that color figured out. Let's start with the, with the highlights. And I'm going to switch to this round blender brush, a uh, larger one, and I may use perhaps a filbert brush. Yeah, maybe one like this or a smaller version, probably more so the smaller version. Let's just start with this round blender brush and I'm actually gonna use this brush to kind of mix my colors. So, the highlights, and I'm gonna get some red. Highlights are going to be kind of just a, a lighter, really simple, just a lighter version of kind of what we have on there already. So I've actually got some white and some black, picking black up with this as well. And just a touch of red. So it's kind of like our color over here, but very light. Add some water. You know what I've been enjoying? Using a little bit of medium. I like that it stays kind of glossy. Oh, there we go. So it kind of retains that brilliance rather than making it look so matte. So we're gonna roll some color together into the medium. Pick up some on my round blender brush. And so I'm just going to kind of look for areas. I'm not going to get too specific. Oof. I can already tell so far this blender brush is too big. So we've got a smaller one. A couple different smaller ones. Start with this one here. Yeah, that's probably better. So I don't have a lot of paint on the brush. It's just enough to leave a mark. And I'm trying to figure out where I want the majority of these highlights to exist. I'm going real careful and real slow right now. Just picking up a small amount. Take some water on my finger. Tap it on. the palette just so I don't overload. Once I get going, I feel like it'll speed up. Right now it's just, I wanna make sure I know what I'm doing. Got a lot of just empty space up here. Real careful with how I'm gonna do this, where I'm gonna put things. So, again, not much paint on the brush, just enough to make a mark. That's really all I want to do right now. I want to paint 
kind of thin. Thin to win. Okay, now I could probably, I'd actually use this larger filbert brush. It has a little more control because it does have a flat side so I can narrow it down when I need to. And I'm gonna blend out some of these marks. I actually kinda like this brush. up high that it's going to be much more soft. So I'm using the wider edge. I'm really having to push on the on the canvas to to get anything to to lay down. So that's kind of how thin the paint is. How little I have on the brush. What I notice this medium does for me a little bit is keeps the texture of the canvas from kind of showing, so it helps kind of create maybe a more uniform look at times. And if you're going really, really thin with some of these washes, it's probably good to use a medium rather than water, even though I've never really ran into issues with thinning down the the paint with water too much. Perfect, so I'm going real slow. I've taken my time building up this type of texture. It's looking good. Looking good. So you know, so I'm scrubbing this on pretty hard. some of that paint off there again I don't want too much as I scrub kind of hard you know just noticing how sturdy that canvas is to the easel somebody asked about that in my previous video what do I use to attach <laughs> the board to the can uh, to the easel and it's just some like 3M, uh, there's a little bit of, uh, you can't see that up above there. Just that blue 3M wall, wall stuff, like stick stuff to the wall. So I just put it on the back, stick it right onto there. Okay, so we're adding very small, minute 
textures to some of this area. Really going on thin, very light, subtle. But I think those kind of textures really make a difference in the end. Having some of those subtle values. Looking good. So I'm going to have some areas that are probably going to be a bit rougher than what I desire. So I'll probably smooth those out with oil paints later. It's kind of what they're good for. But boy, this is going to take me close. I have a feeling it's looking good. I like that so far. I'm afraid to go overboard I think there's a real risk for that because sometimes you don't know how light your highlights are until you have your shadows really laid in I'm gonna grab some ultramarine blue mix that in Yeah, sometimes you just don't know how light those highlights are until you really work on the shadows. So I want to be careful until I get some of those shadows on, kind of determine that. And so that kind of goes back to what I like to do, which is go back and forth from highlights to shadows. I've talked quite a bit about that in the past. Just something I prefer. Just swirling this on, kind of using the the thick end. Look what trips me up about acrylics. Oftentimes is when you put them on, they look like they're too bright, but when they dry, they darken to just about the right amount. You put them on and they look just about perfect, oftentimes they're gonna dry and it's gonna look too dark. So just when you're working on things like this, adding highlights, just remember things are gonna kinda like dampen down a little bit and it's really, I think that trips a lot of people up and probably the reason why a lot of people avoid it sometimes working with acrylics. But if you can kinda get past that mentally, more so just enjoy that you're working on a painting in the first place. You just kind of forget about those details and I think it almost kind of help you. Just kind of forget about it. Okay. That's looking pretty good. What I'm gonna do is Go back to the smaller filbert, and I'm going to take 
some phthalo blue. Mix it with some white, touch of black. So I wanna dampen that down a bit. Running out of space. Don't know where I'm going. A little bit of medium. And I'm going to just kind of try and come up with a little bit of blue sky peeking through. Even take some ultramarine and add it. Something like this. So I'm kind of leaning my hand against the canvas now because I want a slight more amount of control in my arm. I think I've heard to never get so close to the front side of the brush with your, you know, how you're holding it. You're supposed to like hold it backwards. I think that's a load of baloney. It's just how I work best. So that's what I'm going to do. Not everybody works the same. We all have different mechanics and the way we hold things, the way we use our arms. Everybody's made different. So there's no way that one technique could ever be fitting for all. Yeah, so a little bit of color peeking through. Again, something that I think oils could help a lot with. As it can just be so dang hard to get it right the first time with acrylics. But this gives me a head start. That's why I like it. So a lot more saturation when you are adding subtle highlights over the top of darker areas like high up in the sky. You tried using that same color that I was just using down here, this blue, and it almost looks white. It'll look pale, washed out. When you're going over a really dark area, that's what you got to do is as so I've done painting these light areas of, of blue sky as I get further up into here where it's darker, I have to increase the saturation of that blue um, as I get into those darks. So for it to appear the same, I, I don't know. I'm not sure why it works that way. Dark colors can be hard to go over the top. So it's one thing I've learned when you have one color and you're trying to paint, you're trying to lighten it Actually, you have, to, you have to go with more color over the darker areas and less color over the lighter areas. So, a subtle amount, not a ton. That's the other thing, too, is don't go way oversaturated and... Everything I speak of is in very small amounts. You just don't need to change things a lot throughout a painting as you're working. Those subtle changes is what makes big differences. So 
It's looking good. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Now let's kind of work on some shadows. Check my time. I think we're doing all right for now. Yeah, let's work on some shadows. Probably just take... Oop. There goes a brush. Let's start with black and blue. And some medium. Kind of soak some of that water out of my brush. You don't need to go that much darker to make a difference. Whenever you glaze, something to, to remember, whenever you glaze anything, and I probably just use my round blender brush, things darken. Whenever you glaze, it's actually gonna darken no matter how you look at it. If it's a transparent layer, it's pretty much gonna darken the appearance of what's there. So when you're when you keep that in mind, then all of a sudden you have to realize, oh, I don't need to darken that mixture that much when I'm glazing. It doesn't need to be as dark as I think it's going to be, because glazing itself is going to darken it already. And glazing, of course, just a transparent layer of paint. Now, another thing to keep in mind when you're glazing on a layer is if you glaze on, and this is speaking for acrylics only, if you glaze on a color and it doesn't change the appearance right away when the paint is wet, then it's actually going to darken it. Because like I said before, acrylics do tend to darken and matte when they dry. And so if you paint it on and it looks the same, you give it a few minutes or give it an hour or whatever, come back, it's probably going to be slightly darker. So when you're first glazing and if you just want to just subtly change the hue or the value, you really just need to kind of match what's already on there with wet paint and it'll automatically just kind of darken on, on its own. I'm grabbing some of this violet color up there. I'm going to go a little bit darker. Right, so I'm just thinking about shadows. Thinking about shadows. I actually might lose some of those highlights I put on. That's okay. Works together. Builds together. All right, we're about running out of time with cameras. I'm going to just take a break here. And we'll come back. Just a few. Keep going. Looking good, though. Looking good. Okay, so as I took a break, uh, I've just been thinking about this. Cleaned up my palette. I'd like to try and smooth out just some of this area, just kind of right through here. And I'm not quite finished with the highlights yet, but I'm just going to keep on going with some of this violet cover, color that I'm scrubbing in. Go ahead and get some medium. 
So I'm going to stick with ultramarine blue, white, black. I'm also going to need some magenta. Get some gray and just kind of tone that back a bit. So I'm just still using this larger filbert. some blue so I'm just kind of adjusting these colors I'm gonna be mixing everything just kind of on the fly and I'm just using the wide end just kind of just brushing it horizontally across a lot of what I'm doing is sort of and this kind of touches on how to blend with acrylics in such a way that it looks more like oils. And I like to think of it the way I do it. It's kind of what I'm doing right now is I already had a bunch of colors on here. I had these darker tones of blue. I had the, the violets and the magentas and some of the highlights. And I'm basically just mixing what's already on there. So what I'm doing is basically matching the color that's already on the canvas and going back over the top. And in doing that, you're going to soften the appearance of what's already there. So matching the color and basically just reapplying that almost where you can't even see it. And then you can make minor adjustments, a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. And you're actually at the, at the same time that you're lightening it or darkening it, you're actually softening it as well. So matching the colors is how I like to think about it match what's already there, basically just repaint it. But also, a side note, in doing that, you will also want to keep it very thin. So thin layers, matching the color that's already on the canvas, it's gonna produce softer results. And so for something like the sky like this, it's pretty important. But, very nice result. So I'm going to probably pull out a smaller filbert again. And I'm going to stick with just the red. Not the magenta, the red. And that's kind of what my highlight color of the clouds is. A little bit of medium. So white, red, and black. A very, very muted but very light pink so I just kind of mix this with this brush I'm gonna roll some of that paint off there and dab it on this wet napkin I don't want to add too much too soon a little medium just kind of keep it flowing I want to take my time on this. So a transparent layer that's lighter than what's already on there. I don't know if they call that scumming something like that that's a lighter but kind of a transparent layer
Very nice. Easy, huh? I mean, not a lot to it. It's really just about control of your hands at this point. The technique is simple, but I think it really just takes time and practice. If you're, if you're struggling with it, just understand that everybody struggles with it. It's something that takes a lot of patience. A lot of time to sort of get down everything in terms of how much pressure you're putting on the brush, how much the moisture content in the paint, moisture content of the brush itself. How much paint you actually put in the brush. It's just so many factors that go into really anything that you're trying to paint. So, boy, I think if you could just find the love for creating itself and not the finished painting, that's when you really start making progress because then you start working on perfecting some of those things that are that come more difficult than other things that don't come so easy. When you start to love the process of figuring that out, that's when you really put the time needed to get better. So that's another thing to, to touch on. If you're feeling stuck with a paint with painting in general, like you just don't know what to do next, or if you're just unsatisfied with your art, I think if you can just, instead of finding the love and producing the art and showing off the art, maybe is a better way to phrase it. And instead, find the love in the actual creating of it, the struggle of it, the learning of it. That's where the secret is. So not much else to talk about as I'm doing this. This is kind of why I'm just rambling as I go here, I'm trying to bring value in some form or another. But that's why I'm not really talking much about what I'm doing is because it's so repetitive. It's just simple, very simple, but it just takes a long time. So there's nothing really more to say. I'm just taking this color and just patting it onto the canvas at this point. I don't even put more thought into it. It's just a transparent layer. Doesn't really cover up very well. This is why I like using a, a fine textured canvas or why I made that video on how to manipulate a canvas and make it smoother than how it came. It's just because it, it's really hard with acrylics to get a perfectly smooth blend, especially like when you're glazing, texture of the canvas can show through so easily. And then at the same time though, when you want a, a very smooth, effect so you know the the finer woven canvas really helps with that and then you might think that well why wouldn't i just use like a hardboard panel just with primer on it or a gesso board um, and i think those actually go too far i've experimented a ton with gesso boards i've got a lot of paintings with gesso boards. That's all I use for about the first six, seven, eight years that I painted. And I just found that I was almost having to put more work into it because I couldn't get it. 
it was almost too smooth, like the paint didn't grab off of the brush. And so I started to look for ways to add texture to those boards. And you can add a little bit with using different tools to apply the primer, the gesso, sandpaper, things like that. But I started researching different canvases and like linens. And it's a, I figured out that there's just so many options out there so many different canvases create such nice, smooth textures or they come with such a nice and smooth texture that it's almost just perfect. And there's so many different ones. Frederick's, this is the Frederick's Knickerbocker canvas. I like that. I like linens. There's a lot of options out there. Each one has some slight different characteristics to them. I think they all have different benefits, but that just comes down to a personal preference. I'm gonna add a little water. A little water to this, keep it flowing. I'm using a small blender brush right now. And a little bit of my finger. Get some added effect that I want right there. Now I'm gonna start taking more white. Adding white to the orange. A little bit of red. So it's kind of going on sloppy right now. But again, I think as I <clears throat> as I keep adding layers kind of matching this, those colors like I spoke about before. It'll start to blend together. Start to look softer. So good, take a little medium and I'm gonna pick up some of this violet and go right back over the top portion of what I just laid down and try to blend that in to some of those violets a little more. Want all of that to run together. Yeah. That's pretty nice. A little black. Some more blue. A little more water. I think over to the left here, I want it to be slightly darker. There, I think that's looking 
pretty good. I think I can probably just keep using some of that color and adding a few shadows above what I just laid down. Not bad. Actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna take the smaller filbert again. And I'm gonna to try to find some sort of happy medium in between the blues and the violets and lighten it makes somewhat of a highlight. I'd like to add a couple subtle highlights through here. I think it'll help blend everything together, bring everything together, not blend, but maybe bring it together, if there is such a difference. Okay, looking good. A little more white. Much more white. I'm holding my breath here. Adding some lighter highlights. I want to be really careful where I'm putting these highlights. I want to be selective, more importantly. Noticing that the, the smooth brush strokes are becoming easier to make. It's one thing that, about acrylics, a lot of people give up too early. If you keep working at it, I think it actually creates a surface that's easier to blend down, much like dried oil paints. I think a lot of oil painters tend to think that, or tend to prefer to paint over the top of already dried oil paints. It's just very pleasant to work with, rather than just straight onto the, the primed canvas. And I think acrylics kind of do the same thing, which is not talked about very much. But as you add layers of acrylic paint, they actually become very pleasant to work on. They should anyways, they should. A little more color up high here, I've got some violet and pulling back into it. Still holding my breath, being careful how I do this. Mm, it's looking good though. Okay, I'm just gonna step back, take a look. Woo! Man, lovely. Just lovely. Washing my brush out. Checking the time on my cameras. Hopefully everything's still running, looks like it. And, before we take a break, I'm gonna get some orange and white. A little bit of red, so I'm kind of mixing that peachy color again. A little white. I, I do want to touch a black in there. So I'm going to rub that black away, get a little bit of gray, and introduce that. So it just dilutes that color, neutralizes it slightly, and that was too much, I think. 
but it gives us a point to start from. We'll just try that again. A little bit of red into that. Something like that. I'm just gonna kind of blend that out. Add it underneath the sun as well. I'm gonna take some red, add it to this mixture and pull in some of that gray. A little bit of gray, add it in. I think that'll work. Fan it out as best I can. Kind of take my fingers. That's looking decent. I'm gonna just go ahead and take some white, pure white. Make sure I got the moisture off my brush. Some pure white. Get that sun kind of light in there. All right, I'm gonna pick up some yellow. Brush off the excess, just pick up a little bit of yellow there, along with that white. I'm go around the outside of the sun. So I'm gonna just start that process of getting the glow of the sun going. Perfect. Whew. A lot of focus draining me. Okay, I'm going to just take a break and come back in just a few. Okay, we're back. Get some medium on this smaller brush. I'm going to take some blue, mix up. A darker gray, add blue with a touch of magenta to that. A little more blue, and then I'm going to take some water, add it to my palette and take this larger round blender. Load up just, a, not, not a lot onto the brush, just enough to make a dent. And just darken some more off to the left here.
So now I'm primarily glazing pretty much what I'm doing right now. See that go on there and then just kind of disappear, fluff it out. Fluff it out some more. There, looking good, I like that. A little bit darker, brings the focus kind of towards the sun. I'm gonna wash that brush, wash my Wash both of them actually. And uh, let's see here. I think what I need to do is work on not directly around the sun, but on that level, that cloud that kind of cuts through the sun. I need to kind of smooth that out as we get further away from the sun. So I've got some gray mixed with like a reddish orange right here. A little medium and water into that. I want to be careful with how dark this is. I don't want it to be too dark. A little white and orange back into it. And I'll have to add some red as well. Just a small amount. And then with that, take some water, roll that back in. I'm just not happy with this yet. A little more white. A little more color. I think that's getting close. Take some water, and medium, kind of get it right in here. And I'm gonna kind of just dry off this brush, just wipe off a lot of this and then pick up some of that. And I'm gonna lightly kind of go over this area. right down low. Pretty happy with what I've done up until about right where I'm working on. Above anyways. And so we're just gonna kinda try to just move downwards. A little bit darker color. I'm gonna add that over here. Take my finger, blend out some of that. Looks pretty good. A little more of that color. Fluff that out a bit. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. It's looking good. Perfect. I think I'm going to leave leave that for now and I'm going to pick up some white add it to the mixture a 
little orange too. Yeah, stick with this color so it's a tad brighter. And I'm going to fill in this cloud down low with the same. Trying to cover up some of those pencil lines now. Get a little bit of that color and just kind of add it above as well. Yeah, right through there. Just a hint of it on that upper cloud right below. Okay, good. Wash my brush. Go with some white. Maybe a touch of yellow. With a hint of orange. And I want to be careful about this. I want some defined lines through here. Didn't like that. Try it again. Got too much moisture. I think some water drifted into my brush. That's a little bit better. All right, I think what I can do now is add some red into that. Yeah, something perhaps like that. And this area I'm going to start kind of the rough idea of it, and then I'll go back into detail, show you what I mean. A little bit more color, red, orange. Couple changes through the middle of that cloud as well. 
kind of like that. A little more orange and yellow. Add some white. And right through the bottom a little bit. Up into this area as well. Just a little bit of color. I'm just going to stick with that color now. I'm going to get some medium. Go right around the area of the sun. Keep working on that glow. Wash and dry the brush off. I'm going to pick up some white and yellow. And then take one of those blender brushes, blend that edge outward. We're getting there. A little orange and red. A little more red. It's a slow process. Dry that brush off, pick up some white. I'm just going to go right on there with some thick white. Now it's starting to look bright. Perfect. Getting there. I'm going to take some yellow. This part right here is probably the toughest. Getting these blends right. And going about it in the, in the right way. I think again, that just takes practice and doing how you like to do it.
a little bit of orange. See how this, we're just changing this from white to yellow to orange, going outward. It's going to look a little rough, but I'd rather get things looking rough but accurate than try to keep it smooth and risk kind of screwing it up. So just let the brush do its thing. It's still a little bit rough, but it's getting there. Dip my brush in water, add some red after I kind of dried it off. A little more white. So we got kind of a pink, a light, lighter pink. Just a hint of that. And then kind of fanning that outward. Pretty good for acrylics. I'm going to leave it for now let that dry. You don't want to overwork it too much. There is such a thing, I think. It's hard to overwork with acrylics though. They, I mean, they do dry so quick. They give you a lot of roundabout ways to, to keep on moving, but sometimes you do have to be a little bit more cautious. So I'm going to take a round brush now, some medium and some water. I don't know if I'd let this color dry too fast. I'm gonna have to kind of mix the same color I had over here. Okay, I'm gonna pick up some of this color and I'm just gonna add some finer details to this area, to these clouds here. Give them some nice crisp, crisp edges, some narrow openings. There, just a few small details. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I think the sun could be lightened up some more. Some different areas maybe. I'm gonna pull out this larger filbert brush again. Some orange and white. Touch of yellow. And right 
it down low and brighten out this area here. And I think what I need to try and do is continue to brighten up some of that area around the sun. So I've got my bigger round blender brush back again and pick up some yellow and white with some medium. And I'm just going to attempt to very slowly lighten this up with some very light colored yellow. Kind of create the illusion of light around the sun. Anywhere as we get closer to the sun, I just want it to progressively get progressively get lighter. And I think I can do that a little bit more than I have. So this big brush just kind of allows me to change that very subtly. Putting a small amount on the brush at a time. Just transferring that on. Pick up some white. Dab that out with the brush. And just gently lightening up that sun in a circular motion. Mm. Looking bright. Loving that. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's go ahead, go back to that. Go back to this larger filbert brush. Grab some white, some orange, some black. A little more orange and white. Touch of red. More orange, though. And Let's start to work on this horizon. So as I put this on, it kind of looks like the same color, but as it dries, you'll start to see it just pop out at you slightly, a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna add a lot more color and just add black to this. I 
Probably something like that. And let's see. I think that's the color I want. this hill to be. Top of it anyways. And I want to add more red to this. And make a hill over here. That's about that color. I'm going to mix that in with the lighter color and try to blend some of this together back here. white and orange again. So now I'm just kind of doing this on the fly. Break up a little bit of this. I'm gonna get rid of that brush, switch to the smaller Filbert. Add a lot of orange here. Kind of mix that in with this darker color. All right, so I'm just going to keep going sort of with these, these ridges and buttes uh, as we kind of move into the foreground. I'm going to switch to this angular brush again. And I flip my palette around a little bit. I've got some more room to work, some clean palette area. I'm going to start by just taking some yellow and orange, picking up some black. Kind of mixing that in there. A little bit more color. Uh, maybe a little more. A little more black. Trying to find that happy medium of color for these, well, for one, this particular, that actually might be what I'm looking for. Just this one butte right back in there. A little more white and orange. I'm gonna try lightening it. Take some paint off of there. So I'm kind of blending this color into it. Hey, that might work. All right. I'm going to take some orange along with some red and black. It's probably a bit of white in there as well. Some more orange. I'm trying to find again that right tone that I'm looking for. I think I'm close. A little more white and orange. About like that. And I think that's what this is going to end up being. I'm 
Okay, and then as I move further back, more black, more color. I'm just going to darken it. So this brush, I can get a little bit more of a hard edge to it, a hard line. And a little more red. A little more black. Maybe something like that. That's probably about right. I think that's actually about the right color for this butte back here as well. I just love the Badlands. There's lots of Badlands. People don't think there's really any Badlands in Montana. Well, I mean, they call them the breaks, but there's actually some Badlands in Montana as well, and South Dakota and North Dakota. There's North Dakota Badlands. There's the South Dakota Badlands. There's actually Montana Badlands. But then aside from Montana Badlands, there's the Missouri Breaks, which is also Montana. Um, and I would say it's different than the actual Badlands, what I would consider Badlands in Montana. If you're interested, what I'm talking about would be near Terry, Montana, which is south of the Missouri Breaks. It's actually where I got this reference from. So it's a little bit different country, different foliage. It's much similar to the North Dakota Badlands. Very dry. Some juniper, but a very very short juniper. Not that tall stuff like you get in North Dakota. And then of course you get to South Dakota, there's no juniper. There is in some areas, but in the actual badlands of, I guess what you consider badlands, South Dakota, not much, not much, a lot less. But there's not much here either. There's some, I guess, but. All right, I'm gonna take some more orange and red. So I'm gonna get a lot more saturated, some yellow and orange, and then just kind of adding some black. This is a much more rich, deeper, kind of reddish orange. And then I'm going to take and some lighter orange, kind of get back into that color over to the right and just kind of blend those two together. Something like that. And then what I want to do is try and blend that butte so I'm going to kind of use this color kind of blend that butte off to the right as well like so There, that works. I blend that together. That's looking pretty good. Yeah. All right, I think that'll work. I'm gonna wash this brush. And I'll probably just stick with this angular brush for now. I'm gonna pull out some more of the cad orange though. And we're gonna work on 
uh, some of the foreground. We're just going to kind of move to that. So I'm going to take some orange, a little bit of black, and a touch of red. So you get kind of a reddish orange, but just slightly. I'm going to add more orange. Touch of white, touch of red. Try to make it a little brighter. Maybe something like that. Yeah, I think that'll probably work. So now I'm going to start thinking about. some of the details in the foreground. So I'm using kind of the pointed edge of this angular brush. And I'm starting to think about some grass. I got a lot of paint in this brush, probably take some off. Kind of wipe off that brush and then I'm just gonna pick up a little bit less. So I'm going to start thinking about the bunches of grass. And actually, I think at this point, might as well, I'm going to switch to what I have been liking a lot recently, which is this dagger brush. I'm just kind of manipulating it any way that I can, just starting to add texture, not worried about what's going on quite yet. I just want to get the idea of everything going on here, uh, to the best of my knowledge anyways. I can go a little bit higher with over here. Yeah, so just thinking about some highlights. Okay, now as I move further away into the darks, remember I talked about just wanting things to get become more saturated. So more red, more orange, something more like that. So I'm going to, this is just laying the groundwork. I'm definitely going to finalize some of this later on, but I think for this purpose, it'll be really cool. I'm just kind of letting the brush do its thing. I want the 
the overall pattern of the grass. I'm not painting individual pieces of grass yet. I'm just getting the idea of this grass being there. All right, it's looking pretty good. I'm going to take some white and some orange together. I get a much brighter mixture going here. A little bit of that red, but not much. Start the idea of some highlights here. Okay, it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to dry my brush and I'm gonna start thinking about some of these shadows. I'm going to take some black. I'm going to pick up a little bit of this reddish orange color. Not much though, primarily black. little medium in there, keep it kind of glossy. And basically I want to start darkening and fine tuning some of these shadows. So I'm going to mix up kind of some orange here, mix in some black so it's not quite as dark. And that's kind of what I'll use as I move further up. towards the sunlight. So I kind of put those highlights in place first, just kind of so I know what's going on. I'm going to have to go back and forth anyways. So I don't really care how I start. I'm just going to go back and forth. So I started with the highlights. You could probably start with the shadows. I don't know, maybe that'd be better for most. I started with the highlights though. And I'm gonna kinda add some shadows. You kinda wanna move, you know, from back towards the front. And I guess the in my mind the in this case, the highlights are actually sitting behind the shadows because the, you know, the sun is in the background, the furthest back. So then would come the highlights and then the shadows, which are kind of in front here. So I guess that's the way I was thinking about it anyways.
of building it all up at, at once together. I know you've heard me say that before. I like to build things together, not one at a time. Those looking good so far. Okay, feeling a break coming on. I'm gonna take a break. I'll let this dry, think about what I got going on here. We're getting closer. And then uh, come back, kind of wrap it up. So I'm gonna try to finish this up now, at least tentatively for this purpose, for the video anyways. I'm going to get, I'm just kind of mixing some, picking up where I left off, mixing some, a little bit of white, some, just some dark burnt orange color. Yeah, and I actually think, I think I want this color to be on that butte. And then I'm gonna kind of take my finger and blend it out. So then I switch fingers and then switch fingers again. So I got all three now. When you're mixing with your fingers, you kind of have to switch with them. Once you get paint on your fingers itself, it kind of ma makes it a little bit difficult, I would say. So it's nice to have a clean finger. Okay. Well, we're getting there. Put a little bit of this color onto this butte as well. That's looking pretty good though. I think I take some of this dark, this more of a rich orange Yep, and that's going to be kind of the color that I want for the ground back here. And some of those imperfections I'm just going to worry about as I finish this up later. Like I said, I probably add some oils and something near the end. But it's looking pretty good. Okay. Take some orange, some red. Yeah, I think that's about the color that I want. Yep. That's gonna be kind of the color of 
the grass back to the right here. Now, as I work on some of this foreground grass, I do want to start adding a little bit of detail. I don't think I'm going to add all the detail in this in this video, but I'll start to get that idea of that detail. It starts to get real timely. You guys have seen me do this plenty of time. Also got a video, how to make your grass look stunning, I think I called it. And that pretty much covers everything you need to know about the way I do grass. A little more red and orange. So we want larger clumps down and low in the foreground and smaller clumps as we move up towards the sun, obviously. So I'll start to work on that as well, just breaking it up higher up in the, in the foreground into smaller clumps. Just big ones like that right there. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna take some more orange and white. A little bit of red. Something like that. So I'll start to work quite a bit. I'm just adding grass detail I think grass is harder for me with acrylics than it is with oils I just feel like you got more control with oils it's sometimes easier to create not necessarily thin lines but thin lines that cover really well acrylic paints are just harder to cover sometimes especially when you're trying to do something like grass
we're starting to get it. It's really just about adding those textures and slowly building your way towards that desired result. So this is kind of like the next level of detail. You know, it's not super detailed, but it's like a layer of detail, just adding that layer of detail. Okay. I'm going to take this round blender brush and I'm going to start scrubbing in some darker color. And I want this color to I don't want it to be solid black but I want it to be pretty dark and I'm just basically going to start going over some of these layers of grass and I'm going to start to fluff them out so this brush is going to basically soften some of these shadows So I've got the general idea of everything on here. Now I gotta start refining it back to exactly what I want. And I think this brush will give me just enough texture, just about the right amount for what I'm looking for. And I'm probably gonna spend the majority of the, the rest of the time just kinda working it with this brush. Might go back again, kind of the highlight color, and alter it some more. But just now, kind of, this is just one of these things here is just kind of the process of back and forth. Grass is tough. It's tough to just do it like the sky, where you can kind of just blend colors together and they look right. Grass is more about layering. And about layering what you want to, to give you the desired effect. It's hard to just blend it all together at once. Sometimes it just doesn't look quite right when you do that. So that's kind of why I go back and forth. And already you can start to see as I add this shadow, these shadows, it starts to all of a sudden make sense just a little bit more. And it's just because I'm taking the time to go through the process correctly getting those highlights in place. Now I'm working my way forward, which would be the shadows. So a lot of times you hear me say, add the shadows first. I guess it just depends where the shadows are. In this case, we have the light and it's behind everything. It's in the background, it's shining towards us. So those shadows are actually not gonna be down below. They're gonna be up front and you know in front of all those highlights. So yeah, I guess in this case, it would be kind of the opposite when you have a sunset highlights and then the shadows in front so that's kind of the order that i'm layering it and why i'm thinking about it that way so this process here will take a little bit But 
there's not gonna be much more to this. It's looking really good. Yep, and then what I'll do is probably just take some orange. Orange and red. Kind of add some of the color back. Kind of tone back some of those those shadows I just added. I'll probably end up going to the highlights again too. want it to look right and I don't always get it right the first time either that's part of it too it's something a lot of people probably won't tell you as well sometimes I just don't get it right the first time so I will have to go back a second time even though I don't really want to Oh, maybe I'll grab some more highlight color and fluff some highlight back on. Probably should have just been using this brush right away. I do like it for this. Stand back, take a look. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Okay, we'll take just one more quick break and I'll come back for 10 minutes or so. My battery's about to die, so I gotta, gotta do this anyways. And just kind of finish up a couple things. So, so I kind of think about this. I want to try and add a little bit of light perhaps underneath the sun So I'm mixing like a very light orange color. Yeah, about like that. And I'm gonna try to just kind of add just a little bit of a glow, just lightening up this hillside here.
Take some more yellow and orange. Sorry, white and orange. Lighten up this butte back here. Yeah, so I think we're getting there. It's getting really tough to judge at this point. I think I want to probably keep going with some of this dark shadow color. some point I want to just kind of let everything dry probably go to like some oil paints I'm kind of just going back again, adding in some of the, the shadow back in, fine-tuning it some more. Boy, I think you'd have a really nice painting just at this point, though. Wouldn't have to do anything else. I'm going to grab a small round brush, some white and orange, probably a, quite a bit of orange. I'm going to show you how you can add just, you know, a little bit of detail. Kind of help things go a long ways. So, I'll probably want to get into some detail like this a little bit further on yet. I'm not going to stress too much over it. But in the end, I want it to look nice and realistic another thing too what what is really hard to judge right now which is why i'm going to have to just kind of you know leave things as is is when the acrylics dry of course they become difficult to judge they become matte looking they kind of lose their vibrance the the darks might dry a little bit lighter in color um, so it's hard to judge just what you have here And so sometimes it's good to just let her go, move on to, well, you could either kind of add a gloss layer. You could add like a, could add a layer of uh, 
glazing medium. You could add some sort of spray, some gloss spray to it. Anything to just sort of give it that wet look, kind of restore that wet look. That's going to give you a better idea of what you have here, whether you need to add or change anything else. We just aren't too far off though. More orange to this. So I do like to switch to something like this smaller round brush when I kind of get into this portion of the painting. It just that control is what I'm after. I really like having the control. It's hard to do that with anything but a very small brush. We're getting there. A lot of patience. I'm still not 100% satisfied with it all. Okay, I'm going to kind of stand back, take a look at what I got going here. We're really close. Now I'm going to add some things a little bit later to this painting. I've even thought about adding some sort of subject to it. But I'm kind of running out of time for what I can do for the video. I'm gonna try something. Take some white. 
orange, red, a little bit of black. more white mix it up here a little bit of medium and then I'm going to take my round blender brush get most of that water off there and I'm gonna see about darkening a couple of these clouds might not even need the round blender brush uh, maybe just for right here just gonna blend some of that out real quick yeah pretty subtle just darkening up a little bit of that some of these clouds not much though and getting real picky here but take a little bit of red and white yellow yeah it's gonna add some more glow around the sun but you know what i think that's pretty good i don't want to push things too much Darken, darken that cloud just a little bit right there. Blend that out. All right, stand, kind of stand back again and. Oof, I think we're really close. I've said that about a dozen times now, I know. God, that sun, though, is kind of bothering me. If I can just get away with a little bit. Just lightening up some of this slightly. Yeah, that's not bad. And then just squeezing the water out of that brush and trying perhaps just a bit of Red, I'm going to need some white and yellow.
get some white and yellow. more white ah and that's about all you can expect out of acrylics so I think for now I'm gonna kind of call this painting finished uh, I might add a bit of a, a gloss coat but I think that looks pretty good. Just take a little bit, Ooh. take a little bit of the glazing medium and just kind of pick some of that up. Just add it to a couple of these darker areas and see if that has any effect. Yeah, so it does a little bit. Not a huge difference. All right. Looking good. I'm going to call it for now. Well, as always, thank you guys so much for joining me today and following along if you did or just, uh, you know, just watching, I guess. I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, having fun with some of these longer videos, so they probably will continue. Remember, if you have questions about anything that I, I went through today, please leave them in the comments below. If you guys have anything to add else uh, to the conversation, um, I think this is a great place for myself and other artists out there to learn. So I would love to hear from you guys. I think that wraps up today. Make sure you guys check out my free print giveaway as well as my eBay auctions, my website. I sell all these paintings and I auction most of them off through my eBay auction. So check that out if you're interested in a painting. I guess I'll see you guys next time. Thanks again so much for watching.